The bloodhound's remarkable scenting ability is legendary. He has evolved from a hunter of game to a tracker of man. It's proved valuable not only in the hunting field, but in police and rescue work. So acute is his sense of smell that one bloodhound is said to have followed a trail for 138 miles, leading his human companions to their quarry. Indeed, the bloodhound's evidence is still accepted in today's courts of law. The bloodhound is thought to be the modern-day representative of an ancient hunting dog, first recorded in the third century AD. Arriving in England by the 12th century, he was a prized member of the field in locating game large and small. But it was in 19th century America that his uncanny ability to follow a scent was put to other trailing tasks. You'll be seeing many bloodhounds during this presentation. Some are outstanding examples of the breed. Others are less so. But all will help your understanding of the breed. Now, let's begin. The bloodhound is a sturdy, powerful dog. And because of his size and length of body, he stands over more ground than is usual in other hounds. He has good depth of body and should appear solid and well-muscled. The skin is fine to the touch and very loose, hanging in folds about the head and neck. He's extremely affectionate, but can be somewhat reserved in nature and is equally sensitive to kindness or correction by his master. He is not quarrelsome with other dogs. Perhaps no other characteristic of the bloodhound is so distinctive as the head. Here's a good example. From the side, you can see that the head is relatively long in proportion to the rest of the dog. The planes of the skull and foreface are nearly parallel. The length of the foreface from tip of nose to stop should never be less than the length from stop to occiput. The entire length of head from back skull to tip of nose should be 12 inches or more in dogs. Bitches may have somewhat shorter heads, 11 inches or more. A prominent feature of the bloodhound's head is the occipital peak, seen here. The head is rather narrow in proportion to its length, seen from the front, tapering slightly from temples to the end of the muzzle. The overall effect is a head that seems flattened at the sides and nearly equal in width throughout its entire length. The nose is characterized by nostrils which are large and open. The bloodhound standard makes no reference to the desired bite, but it is generally assumed that soundness in all aspects of structure, including the mouth and jaw, is to be desired. This dog's head is clearly incorrect. The typical peak of the occiput is missing. This is undesirable. What about this dog's skull? It is too wide. And this one's skull is too short and falls away too sharply. Both are incorrect. And here's a dog whose foreface is too short. Remember that the muzzle should be at least equal in length to the skull. This dog's head is correct. There's a prominent occiput, and the skull and muzzle lie in nearly parallel planes. The muzzle itself is long, deep, and has the proper depth of lip, which gives the square outline when viewed in profile. Eyes are deep set. The lids give the eyes a lozenge or diamond shape. This is created by the lower lids being stretched downward due to the characteristic heavy flues. The color of the eyes should be in keeping with the color of the coat and varies from deep hazel to yellow. The hazel color is preferred. Although in liver dogs like this one, the eye color and pigment tend to be lighter. 
See how the eye shape and color enhance the dog's solemn yet gentle expression. But these eyes are incorrect and unhealthy as the lids turn in and inflame the eye. This is indicated by the swelling around the eye as seen here. The ears are thin, set very low and extremely long. They fall in folds with the lower parts curling inward and backward. They are soft to the touch. This dog's ears are set below the eye which is correct. As you judge this breed, remember that proper ear set may be difficult to assess if the dog is excited and using his ears. These ears are well set and of fine leather. Ear leather should be long and should extend at least to the end of the nose. Another important feature of the bloodhound's head is the loose skin, which in nearly every position appears superabundant. And it is especially noticeable on the forehead and sides of the face when the head is carried low. The bloodhound also has very prominent flues. The flues, combined with the loose skin around the neck, form the characteristic dewlap, which is very pronounced. Bitches tend to have less loose skin than dogs. Let's review the key characteristics of a proper bloodhound head. It is relatively long in proportion to the body, 12 inches or more in dogs, 11 inches or more in bitches. Second, the occipital peak, an important feature. A bloodhound head cannot be considered correct without a readily visible occiput. It is very pronounced in puppies like this and will become slightly less so as the dog matures. Third, the characteristic wrinkling, flues, and dewlap. Fourth, proper depth of lips, giving the foreface a square appearance. Fifth, proper expression, dignified and gentle, with deep-set eyes and very long, low-set ears. These features combined lead to the typical bloodhound head seen here. Now, let's consider the bloodhound's neck and body. The neck should be long. This neck is of proper length and adds a sense of nobility and elegance to the dog's appearance. You can see how the neck blends smoothly into the shoulders with no break or dent. Since a working bloodhound spends much of his time with his nose to the ground, the neck should be long enough to eliminate any crouch or spraddle while the dog follows a trail. Note the wrinkling which hangs on the shoulder like a mantle. Heavy wrinkling like this, however, is excessive. This dog's neck is too short and thick. This correct neck blends well into the shoulders, which are muscular and well laid back. Good muscling and well-placed shoulders and upper arms will help the dog maintain his steady, even gait for long periods of time. From the front, the characteristic muscling is more apparent. Notice the good depth of chest and deep keel, allowing plenty of room for lung capacity. The front legs should be straight with plenty of bone and substance. The elbows should be squarely set. But this dog is too narrow in front and lacks the proper fill. While this dog is too wide in front, he is muscle bound and loaded in shoulder. His legs are not straight as his elbows are out, making him toe in. This dog appears to be too straight in front, which could limit his staying power in the field. Here again is the correct 
bloodhound front assembly with correct shoulder and upper arm angulation and strong legs. Note the prominent forechest. Feet are strong and well knuckled up. The pads should be thick and tough, able to travel over a wide variety of ground conditions. These feet are splayed and flat with thin pads. This is incorrect and undesirable for a trailing hound. The back is strong and a level top line is desired. The loin should be strong and slightly arched. Ribs should be well sprung and have good length and depth. What about this dog's body? He is too short in body to move properly. He also has a dippy top line. Here again is a correct bloodhound body. The long, deep body is responsible for the impression mentioned earlier, that of standing over more ground than is usual in other hounds. The body has to be long enough and deep enough to ensure efficiency and freedom of movement when the bloodhound is working. Hindquarters should also be marked by good muscling with sufficient bend of stifle for free elastic gait. The thighs and second thighs, Gaskins, are very muscular. The hocks are well bent and let down, like these. This dog's rear assembly is not correct. He's too straight in stifle and too high in hock. This dog is overangulated in the rear. What about this bitch? She lacks proper muscling in the thighs, which is very undesirable. From the rear, the narrowness is accentuated by the excessive wrinkle. Here is the correct rear assembly with well-muscled gaskins and low hocks. This bitch is likely to be an efficient, powerful mover, undaunted by a long day's work. The tail is long and tapering and is set on rather high. It's of sufficient length to maintain a balanced appearance with the rest of the body. There is a moderate amount of hair on the underside of the tail. This dog's steep croup accentuates his low tail set. As for color, you will see liver and tan, also known as red and tan. Red also known as tawny, and black and tan in varying degrees. The color on all of these dogs is equally acceptable, as is lighter colored hair mixed in the darker parts of the coat. This is known as badgering. A small amount of white on the chest, feet, or tip of stern is permissible. Movement is the critical test of any dog's conformation. The bloodhound should move with a free, elastic gait. It should seem as if the dog could spend considerable amounts of time on the trail, as indeed he is sometimes required to do. See how the top line remains firm and level with the tail carried high, the tip in line with the base of the tail, but not carried over the back. What about this bitch's movement? Her shorter upper arm hampers reach in front, which will limit her endurance. Coming toward you, the forelegs display a straight column of support from elbow to foot, and the feet converge slightly toward a center line. Going away, there is again a straight column of support from hip to hock, as well as good drive. Remember that a properly balanced and proportioned dog will move with a swinging free gait like this. 
The bloodhound is first and foremost a trailing dog with remarkable stamina and endurance. Finally, a word about height and weight. Dogs usually vary from 25 inches to 27 inches and bitches from 23 to 25 inches with the mean being 26 and 24 respectively. But in either case, the greater height is to be preferred. As for weight, dogs in fair condition will average 90 pounds and bitches 80 pounds. Dogs may attain the weight of 110 pounds, bitches 100 pounds. The greater weights are to be preferred. But remember, the dog's overall quality, balance, and proportion must be considered with height and weight to maintain proper bloodhound type. Unswerving in loyalty, steadfast in purpose, tenacious in pursuit, the bloodhound is a unique example of the ancient tie between man and dog.